Hey s'mores, I'm Shannon Morse. Welcome to Morse Code. Today is the last build video in my entire series about moving into this brand new basement studio for my YouTube channel. Oh, my dog just farted. Oh my God, Sookie. Did you have to do that right where I'm sitting? It smells like rotten eggs, girl. She always farts at like the worst times and I gave her a bone earlier, so of course she farted, but oh, girl. Come on, couldn't you have done that when I was like at my editing desk and far away from you? No, you had to do it when I'm sitting in my lounge chair right in front of you, of course. So today's video is pretty exciting. I took two weeks worth of organizing, building furniture, cable management, painting the studio set wall, setting up all the frames and the artwork and setting up like the audio equipment, including these sound dampening panels, everything took about two weeks worth. So I was able to combine everything, put it into a time lapse for you so you can see it from start to finish. I also have some before and after photos that I will show you as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into it. I hope you enjoy this video and I will see you on the other side. I wanted to show you a little life hack that I figured out for YouTubers who may be interested. If you want to come up with a permanent solution for your foam panels on your walls, this is something that has worked for me for the past year and I decided to do this in my new studio as well. So what I did was I went to Target and I got this. This is their Elmer's Board Mate. It's extra strength spray adhesive. I got like four cans of this for all of my boards. I also got this foam board, which is 36 by 48 inches. And then I cut it to size using uh, just a little paper cutter. So the actual size of the board was actually about that big and it's three-sided. It's supposed to be made for presentations, but I'm using it for this. So after I cut that foam board to size, I take my acoustic panels and I lay them out into the layout that I want. So this is what my layout kind of looks like right there. And then I spray each one foot by one foot panel and I put down each of the different acoustic panels one by one. As you can see, I'm pretty generous with the adhesive spray and that's why I recommend getting multiple bottles of it so you don't run out because this will not last you very long. But this is a very inexpensive way to get a permanent solution for your wall panels. And it's a solution that's portable so that you can reuse your wall panels as much as you need in case you move studios like I am. So here is the finished wall panel. And as you can see, it looks really good. I don't see any major spots where you can see the backboard behind the acoustic panel. So I think it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna let that dry and then I will hang it. And this seems to work really well. For example, the last ones that I had up were on wood boards that I had gotten from Lowe's when foam panels were just like non-existent during the pandemonium that was 2020. So I ended up picking up these, uh, these wood boards. They worked exactly the same. And then, so instead of using 3M strips, which I find never actually work, they always fall off the freaking wall. At least that's been my experience. I always nail the wood panel or the foam panel straight into the wall and then I will nail them in right in these corners so right in between so that way I'm not damaging the foam panels they're still adhered via adhesive binding to the back of these boards and they stay on there the wood ones that I had up lasted for a year before I took down the nails and I'm gonna reinstall them in my new studio and as you can see they are perfectly ready to go so I am ready to put these down in the basement. So you did see a little bit of this footage from the last video in this series, but I did want to add in some additional footage of hanging these ceiling panels that are made for sound dampening. Uh, again, both of these are made by a company called RLX, and I chose them because I am familiar with that brand. I've used them already in the Hack 5 studio, so I decided to stick with that brand in my own personal studio because I've had a lot of really good experience with them. So you simply just hang those sound panels from the ceiling and you are ready to go. And they honestly do dampen a lot of the sound. So I will put the link down below so you can find those for your own studio. The next thing that I hung were my bass traps and those go in the corners. Those help out with some other frequencies and they help kind of soak up some of that sound. So I put those in the corners and I used these Velcro strips, which are from, I want to say Scotch. 
but I'm going to put a link down below to those as well because you can buy these on Amazon and honestly two months later they are still hanging up there so I can definitely attest to them actually working and working really well. So if you are looking for a permanent option for bass traps or for sound panels then these are a really really good tool to use. Yes if you do want to pull them off they will damage your walls but this is a lot easier than damaging your foam panels by you know putting nails through them for example. All right, so we have some new footage. This is when we decided to go ahead and paint the studio wall. Now you can see in the bottom corner, I had four different choices for colors that I had picked out from Lowe's. And of those four colors, I chose the top right color. So you will see that in just a second. But first thing I went through was of course, putting up the painter's tape. I actually really enjoy painting walls. I don't know why, but I find, I find that it's really calming. It's kind of like a meditative process. So I really enjoyed painting the studio wall. And I chose this color specifically because it wasn't too bright. So I didn't feel like it would take away from what's on set, uh, specifically me as the subject or the products that I'm reviewing on my table as the subject. So I didn't feel like it was gonna take away from that. It also has kind of a gray color to it. So I think it's gonna be a lot easier to color balance with this and it will be really easy for me to bounce lights off of. And yes, I definitely did paint the plugs as well. And they look really good. They look really great. So I'm happy that I did that. My local friend, her name is Jenna. she showed up and she helped me paint the entire wall. And honestly, with her help, it only took us maybe an hour or two to do the entire thing. It was a very, very fast process. And that's including doing a lot of detail work around the corners, painting the plugs, and also making sure that we didn't mess up around the edges. So it was a very, very quick and painless process. I did go back around and I kind of touched it up anywhere that we missed, but honestly, it looks so good once it's dry. It's so even. And I was just really, really happy with this pink color. So I'm very excited to record on this set because it looks so good. So up next, of course, we have Mr. Snubs and myself, and we are building my Uplift desk. Now this desk is a product sponsor from Uplift for the new studio. So thank you so much to Uplift for sending over this beautiful, gorgeous new desk. I chose the bamboo one. So I have this really beautiful, warm, natural wood that is introduced to my new studio. I think that it contrasts the gray flooring really well and it brings a lot of beautiful warmth to this room. It's very natural looking and I absolutely adore it. This is also a much bigger desk than what I used to have. So since this desk is larger, I'm able to fit a lot more on it, which also gives me a lot better productivity whenever I'm working on my shows. I believe the total size on this is 72 inches from side to side. So I'm actually able to fit two widescreen monitors as well as my computer tower on here and still have space to work on the desk itself. So I was very, very happy with this size. The nice thing about Uplift is they last a long time. I've had a previous Uplift desk for I wanna say half a decade and it's still going strong. So I didn't get rid of my previous one. I'll definitely let you see that during the studio tour, but this one is so much bigger and I love the size. I love that I can stand it up at a raised position whenever I want to stand at my desk and get some movement happening in my core. I also love that I can sit at it. If I don't feel like standing up, I can always choose my position up and down and it's very, very easy for movement.
So once we got all of the studio furniture built, I was moving everything in. And as you can see in this video, I have a bunch of boxes. So my task for the next few days when I was working at this point was just to get everything organized, to get everything out of its boxes. That really large box in the middle of the floor is my new 15U rack for my network setup, uh, which you will see in a future video as well. I did record that entire build as well. Organizing my desk was actually a pretty painless process. It was kind of fun to get everything organized and into new places that would really work for my production style and my productivity. So I cleared off that desk and then I started putting together everything on the uplift desk so that I could get to work editing videos and editing these studio videos for you. The two monitors that you're going to see here are both from Alienware, which is another product sponsor for the studio. So Alienware sent over these two beautiful brand new widescreen monitors. Both of them are NVIDIA G-Sync capable. So if I wanna play games with my GeForce RTX GPU, which is in that tower that you can see there. They look so gorgeous on these two monitors. So I'm super, super excited to be able to use both of them, especially because editing and timelines looks amazing on a widescreen monitor. And I was amazed that I could fit both of them up here along with my tower. So definitely a big enough desk to fit both of these beautiful monitors. And I do want to thank Uplift and Alienware for providing these products for my new studio. So one of the cool things when it comes to a standing desk is it makes it so much easier to do cable organization because you don't have to like sit underneath a sitting desk for hours on end trying to organize all of your cables. So cable management was a little bit easier with this desk. I also recommend pushing it out from the wall and organizing all your cables behind the desk before you actually put it in its final stationary placement. Okay, so I mentioned a older uplift. So this is the older desk that I've had for like half a decade. In fact, I've probably had it closer to like eight years. It's been a long time. But this is one of their older desks. You can see that it's white on the top. This one is smaller. I believe it's 60 inches. So I'm using it as a secondary lab desk. So. When I say that, I mean I'm going to be using it for soldering, I'm going to use it as a computer building station. Basically anything that I want to get done that I don't necessarily want to do at my regular editing desk, I can go over to this secondary desk and get it done over there. So this is where I'm going to keep all of my tools, all of my additional products like an extra keyboard, an extra monitor, and yes that monitor is also an Alienware as well. They have the best monitors. I love them so much. This is also where I'm going to be storing all of my extra studio supplies and extra hacker supplies, including cables and charging products. So extra batteries, all that good stuff. charging I got this cute little rainbow storage container from container store a long time ago when I first moved here to Colorado and I decided to reuse it in my new studio because it works so great for just organizing all of my cables. I also used a Bluetooth connected brother printer for the label maker so I could put these little sticky labels on the front of each of those drawers and that helps me kind of keep everything sorted so it's really easy for me to find all of my cables. Now I guess this is what you could call the first view of my finished studio desk. So that 
white table that you see there is what you will see in all of my videos that I record for Morse code. And once I was done with most of the organization, I was able to take a little bit of a break and hang up my new hammock, which came as a little bonus add-on with my uplift desk. I have a hammock underneath my desk. I tried it out, it's very comfortable. My husband tried it out, he liked it, and my cat tried it out too, and she liked it. Oh my God. She has nails though, she might like totally destroy this thing. Oh, <laughs> do you like the hammock? Starbuck? <laughs> You're so cute. Starbuck. Aww. I should give her a little pillow. Oh my God, Starbucks. So it was around this time that I took a vacation to visit my family back in North Carolina. This was in July. So I was able to go visit them. And by the time I got back, I was waiting for these two big storage cabinets to come in from Ikea and they finally, finally came in. So my, my project, the studio basement series was kind of delayed because I was waiting for these two big storage cabinets to come in. I had some older, like open air shelving that I was using in my Sailor Moon collection room slash tech studio, but I decided to leave those in the collection room and just use them for my Sailor Moon collection and actually get, you know, legitimate storage cabinets for the studio because I wanted everything to kind of be contained and hidden, especially if I'm not using it every day, so I don't have to look at it and it looks less cluttered. I'll put a link down below to both of these storage cabinets because they are really nice. I'm very happy with the quality, even though they're, you know, they came in boxes. I was not expecting very high quality, but they look really good and they work perfectly for my needs. So I'll definitely link those down below as well. Both of them again are from Ikea. In total, I believe building these storage cabinets took us four to five hours. It took us a really long time to build both of the cabinets. Luckily, my husband was there to help because some of the pieces were rather heavy and he also helped me move them into place and put on all the drawers and the cabinets and make sure everything was even. Once we got these built and put into place, thank you so much, Mr. Snubs, for your help. I was able to finally organize the rest of my components for the studio, go ahead and hang up whatever frames I wanted to put on the walls, hang up my sound panels for the studio, and then I could officially say that I was done. Good job, babe. You're, you're a fine American. Look at you working over there hard. Working hard, making that money. <laughs> I know you're paying me. <laughs> I will pay you in the form of buying you beer from the grocery store. Good job, honey. You did a great job. Yay. Thank you for that valuable work today. I appreciate it. Thank you, kid. Oh, they look so nice. Good job, honey. I have a question. What? What you making me for dinner? <laughs> uh, teriyaki chicken thighs and corn on the cob. Oh, I love you so much. <laughs> So in total, this entire process took several months and thousands and thousands of dollars. And one thing I did not account for at the beginning was how much I would be paying for furniture that was going to go into this new studio. So that was definitely an expense that I didn't really accommodate for until afterwards. So needless to say, thank you so much for your support because this was a 
very big investment, much bigger than I had expected, but I'm so excited and I'm happy. I'm 100% positive about the entire thing and I cannot wait to show you the final space. So here you can see a few before and after pictures to give you an idea of what the space started as and what it looks like now. Again, this was a completely unfinished basement. So we did everything between framing, putting up drywall, painting, doing the floor, electrical, and everything in between. It was a long, long process and I'm officially working in here now and I can't wait to show you the final studio tour coming up in hopefully just a few days. So I also wanted to give a huge, huge shout out to Ubiquity. You didn't see me put together any of the Ubiquity equipment in this video, but they are also one of my studio product sponsors for this series. They provided all of my networking gear for the new studio and I gotta say, now that I've set it up and I have a 15U rack for all of my gear, I am so happy that I upgraded to Ubiquity from an old consumer router. The change is so awesome. I love that I can customize so much in the Ubiquity settings. I love that I can have separate secure LANs for my editing computer as well as all my IoT equipment. It's really, really cool and I can highly recommend. So I'm very happy with that. And you will see a future video showing that entire setup and how I set it up because there were a few bits that I needed help on to determine how to correctly do it. And I wanted to give a shout out to Lutron. Lutron provided the Cassetta wireless switches. I have three of them down here as well as a couple of remotes. And I got to say, it is so cool being able to tell Google, for example, to turn on my basement and all of the lights turn on. It is so cool to be able to have dimming switches in a little remote that can sit on my studio editing desk and I can turn them on and off without having to walk over to the switch itself and turn it on and off there. They were also incredibly easy to install myself. So I did not have to have an electrician come in to install install those and replace the switches in the walls. It was very, very simple. Of course, I always recommend, and as you should, make sure that you're turning off the electricity, especially to that room, before you're installing new switches because you will be working with wires and you don't want those wires to be live while you're putting in new switches. So keep that in mind. So that was the basement studio time lapse of me moving in and getting everything ready to go so that I could actually start working down here and filming videos on my brand new set. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed putting together that time lapse and seeing all those before and after pictures really puts it into perspective. So I hope you like those too. Coming up in a few days, I am going to be posting my studio tour so you will get to see every single inch of this studio and see how I set it up and I will also be walking you through several different review videos of all the different products that I actually use down here day to day. So there's still a lot in store that are behind the scenes type of videos for this series so I hope you will stick around and make sure to subscribe so you can check those out and I also wanted to say just a huge thank you to everybody who has been supporting me through this. It was a lot of of emotional labor as well as physical labor as you can see from today's time lapse lots and lots of work so I was exhausted once it was done <laughs> shout out to everybody that supports me over on patreon buy me a coffee and buys my merchandise that I sell down below the links are in the show notes as well as that join button thank you to everybody who joined me as a s'more all of that does directly contribute to building this studio so I really appreciate everybody that has supported this journey and this process from start to finish and we still have so much going on I have so many videos planned for this studio so I cannot wait to start pumping those out every single week. I'm so stoked. You're going to see a lot more videos coming up in the next few months. So I hope you're looking forward to it as much as I am. Don't forget to subscribe. Smash that like button as all the YouTubers say. Uh, hit the join button if you're interested in getting access to perks and uh, comment down below on your thoughts about the studio and what you have seen so far. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. I'm Shannon Morse and this was Morse Code. I'll see you later. Bye y'all.